Hey everybody, welcome back to the Podcast Daily. It is a midweek edition here as we get rolling along with the offseason and a pretty seismic change inside the Big Ten. Not really that much different for Ohio State, but maybe there will be some impact for Northwestern moving on from um, Pat Fitzgerald. That's Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. I'm going to start by making a prediction. This was very popular on social media on Monday night, but I'm going to drill down and say that Brian Hartline is not going to coach Northwestern. <laughs> wow. yeah. Thoughts? I'll, 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 t- I'll tell you on that one. I said to you guys on Slack on Monday night, it, I feel sort of bad in some way for Kevin Wilson because this is a job that I think would have been pretty perfect for him considering his roots to Northwestern. Um, and I guess he still could conceivably be a target, but I doubt it. Um, and now he's at Tulsa, but uh, definitely not the scenario where I see Brian Hartline – moving to Chicago to take over Northwestern. Isn't it? It's weird, Bill, because a lot of the traction seemed to be coming from accounts that were suspiciously related to a, I don't know, a rival of Ohio State. (laughs) Yeah, like Sharon Moore is a legitimate candidate, I would think, for Northwestern, but I I get, and that's Michigan's offensive line coach, for anybody who doesn't know, a very good offensive line coach. I don't want to hire him if I were Northwestern. Um, but it seems like the the Michigan counter to that was like, how about Brian Hartline? What, what about when do you just hire him? Which is very funny. Uh, it's a funny, um, I don't know, peek into the insecurities, I think, that still exist within the rivalry, despite the fact that Michigan has won the last two years. Uh, they are very much afraid of Brian Hartline, so they would like for him to leave Columbus uh, in any fashion uh, possible. But yeah, he's not going... Uh, have you been to Evanston? Who wants to go to Evanston? I don't want to live in Evanston. I, I don't think that they're actually afraid of Brian Hartline. I believe, and this is just perhaps the cynic in me, that there is a a large swath of the Michigan fan base and perhaps the national college football, um, you know, mindset of the the the, the high the high mind mind. Is, that Brian Hartline is what is the, the final thread for Ohio State that's clinging them to eliteness, and that people believe that if he were to leave that all of a sudden Ohio State would stop recruiting wide receivers well and thus would stop doing everything well, and that that is what they believe is is the final straw that they could use to break the back of the Ohio State camel. That's what I think. Hmm. But they're I still think there's wrong. Also, right. I think there's also a misunderstanding about Brian Hartline's priorities for his professional career. He did interview with Cincinnati for a job that I didn't think was going to fit for him, and he quickly – removed himself from consideration. I'm not sure that he would have got it anyway, but uh, my conversations with him, and he is uh, you know, certainly willing and able to change his mind if he so chooses, was if he was going to go, that the NFL would be more appealing to him. But if there's a head coaching job in college football, I would think that Northwestern would not fit the bill of what he would be looking for. I think the short list would be um, replacing Ryan Day and then – that's the end of the list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he said before, right, that he wants to go to a place where he can, like, win trophies. And, I like, national championship trophies would be ideal, but I think trophies in general, uh, that, that ain't Northwestern. So uh, I don't think we have to worry about that. Now, do you guys think that this job, because of the changing landscape of college football, is actually, and, and knowing that they have a almost a billion-dollar investment going into downtown Evanston and, and the new Maybe. stadium and all this. Well, I, I assume I don't, I don't know if those those three or four people are going to pull it away, but that this job is actually much more appealing, even with Northwestern's like rigid academic standards. That because we're heading into an era of basically two conferences, that this job is actually much more appealing than it would be two years ago. Yeah, I do. You're going to make a lot of money to coach Northwestern, and you're not going to have the expectations that would typically come with that amount of money. Um, so I do, I do think it'll be a pretty enticing job. I think you want to be, as much as you can, you want to position yourself to be on one of these two ships, the Big Ten or the SEC. Um, even if you're in the basement of one of those conferences, uh, it's going to be pretty lucrative. And even if you're not successful, you're going to get to keep all that money when you're done anyway. So yeah, I think it is going to be pretty enticing. I, I can listen to that argument and I understand it, especially the financial side. Uh, and then, But I have a hard time actually believing that High achieving, high striving, competitive coaches will want it. I think Northwestern is an unwinnable spot. Pat Fitzgerald is was heralded as one of the best coaches in all of college football because he 
achieved a couple uh, conference championships, one with a pretty big, big asterisk in my mind, and you know one other real season of consequence. But then they quickly regressed to what I mentioned the other day, which is one win in three of the last four seasons in the Big Ten. Not very good. Pretty bad, in fact. And I don't know how you're going to overcome that by just building a new practice facility on the water. Uh, as you said, Bill, like some, I saw other people speculating uh, on the social medias that, well, it's a beautiful place to live. People are going to want to definitely go to Evanston. I don't believe that's true. I think that is a lie, especially because a lot of coaches like to have a beer after work and all the bars would be closed or they're hidden. I don't know where they are. I've never been to one in Evanston. So that's strike no two. No bars open, but plenty of car washes. <laughs> so, Ugh. yeah, I, I am. I think what's more likely is that the things that you referenced, the financial contracts that are being offered and being in the Big Ten will entice a lot of coaches to put their name in the hat. And then ultimately they'll take a raise to stay wherever they are. Um, it's it's a nice threat to send your athletic director. But if you're – I'm just going to use the plus gets example out, and Burn can maybe talk about Matt Campbell, one of his favorite topics. Um, when we put he's, he's mentioned for every job under the sun. Why would he take a comparable salary, let's say, to go never win at Northwestern? I don't understand – like the, this is the life raft just going to the big 10 and potentially making a little more money. Like if that's the, if that's the kind of person that you're after, I don't understand why they would want to go put themselves in position to like go six and six and get to um, the pinstripe bowl. Like that to me, I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical of that. Yeah. I think so much of this is just about uh, if you look back at Northwestern in the last 17 years under Pat Fitzgerald, had he not been Pat Fitzgerald, the guy who played there in the All-American and the last pl player on their actual last good team in 1995, um, would they have kept him as long as they have? Like, I, I don't know that they would, if even with all of the, um, you know, academic success and everything else that they've had there. I, I don't think that someone walks into that job with a new billion-dollar investment into downtown and does it without any expectations, especially because college football is going to put such an onus on these two conferences. Chicago in the NIL era, like you, you, there are ways this could be successful for someone. Um, but a, a guy like Matt Campbell, who begrudgingly left Toledo to go to Ames, Iowa, who, from what I understand, went to Ames essentially because it was like Toledo, Iowa, but with a couple million more dollars attached to it for his contract. Is Evanston like that same sort of vibe? I don't think so. Um, uh, ultimately, the timing of this is what's fascinating, not because of he was originally suspended and now he's fired, but I mean, this is four new coaches in the Big Ten worst, the, the Big Ten West, uh, this season. <laughs> and that's, <Smooth. laughs> what, that's what pretty, a slip of the tongue. That's pretty wide open. I mean, that, that changes the dynamic of this, uh, mm -hmm. of this division quite a bit. And it really opens the door in my mind for Luke Fickle to like walk in and turn Wisconsin immediately into the monster of the of the West. The worst. The West. It won't even be there in a year's time. That's what makes it even harder for Northwestern, in my mind, to get this salvage. Like they don't get to feast on those teams anymore. Feast, quote unquote, because they never actually did that. They were again one and eleven last year. Um, like they're going to have to start With cycling. Their one the win, an improbable comeback win against Nebraska that no way in the world should have ever happened, which led to ultimately Nebraska firing their coach. And the birth so of more on Monday. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that was the birth, the birth, the short, the short lived life of more on Monday. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you guys make good points about that, about that job because it's, I, I wonder about like the upward mobility of North, of the Northwestern job because, like, on one hand, the, the visions are being scrapped and, the path to the random. We won the West this year. We're playing in Indianapolis. Like, just is not going to be there anymore. It's going to be Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin, probably in perpetuity. And I guess USC and UCLA in that conversation too when they when they join the league. Um, you're you're just not going to be positioned that way as a as a West also ran that can kind of rise up randomly. But we also don't know. Like college football has changed quite a bit since Pat Fitzgerald took that job, and recruiting landscapes have shifted a bit. And there's going to be you know presumably a lot of money 
put into the facilities for that program. We've already seen the practice facility. Like I think a shiny new stadium can be enticing to people. I don't know. Maybe that maybe this is potentially more of a stepping stone kind of job than we give it credit for. I'm, I'm not saying it definitely is. I'm just saying like we don't know because there's just been one guy there for so long. And during that time, college football has changed quite a bit in a way that that could make this job a little more appealing than maybe we would we would otherwise uh, assume because the history prior to Pat Fitzgerald is just not very good. Um, but like, I don't know, Berm, like isn't Chicago recruiting like halfway decent? And, and isn't there a possibility that <clears throat> Northwestern with a pretty cool stadium and a really nice facility might have like some shot of keeping those kids home with the right coach. And then that like the right coach might find with it a right, appealing place to be for right three or four coach. years. Right. With the right coach, but also with a staff record label and a crew who is dedicated to like surviving in this NIL era of college football. Yeah. And I don't know that if North that Northwestern's administration is ready to to do that. And so you you can have this shiny new stadium and you can have this beautiful um, you know, new practice facility. But if you have a coach that is looking for a two year or three year deal to move on, if you have assistants that are not lo- going to be long term assistants like Pat Fitzgerald had, if you don't have an administration that's ready to go all in on football, then I, I don't know what the ceiling is for Northwestern in this new Big Ten era. I don't think they're they're Missouri. It, you know, if we're playing SEC counterpart, I, I still think they're Vanderbilt. And I, I don't know how you're gonna pass that up. You're Vanderbilt without really good baseball. You know, you're you're like your best program is writers. <laughs> seemed like <laughs> seemed well baseball program in a little bit of trouble as well. And their writers are having a very hard time. Uh, their professional writers coming to terms with their hero being Wait, fired. Are Vander, is Northwestern having some baseball issues as well? They're, yes, they're, they're, uh, Vanderbilt's baseball program, I, I think, is fine. Northwestern's is going through the exact same thing that their football program is. Hmm. Well, that's not ideal. In the big picture, it's just but funny that you brought that up as an example because they've like, got a they've got a yeah, fun basketball gonna, team. They were a better basketball team than Ohio State was last year, and I'll stand on it. Okay, that is true. That will work. And they I mean, and I they get maybe. all their, their best players coming back too. They're going to be a really good basketball team this year. Pack Welsh Ryan. That's all I'm saying. If you're a Northwestern fan, get to Welsh Ryan <laughs> and just and just enjoy it. You know, because this oh, for this all your Northwestern bad. fans that listen to our Ohio State podcast. This, this is this for you guys. wild right turn. Wild right turn. Um, oh boy, I was going to say that, that their administration like was all in on football because they were willing to sweep this under the rug with a two week suspension in the middle of vacation. But uh, clearly, it's weird they, that didn't work. It's, it's strange. Yeah. Everyone was like, "What are you doing over there?" Go. Like, oh, it's far worse <laughs> than anyone ever thought. Yeah, time to fire your coach. Uh, I Whoops. mean, I know you guys are not message board perusers to the level that I am, but. Immediately seeing Urban Meyer's name attached to Northwestern <laughs> was was not what I expected to see um, after that happened. But you know their their fan base, which is limited, I imagine, but powerful, um, is, is deciding they're like, hey, if we're going to be the bad boys of the Big Ten, let's go get let's go get Urban Meyer. Um, do you think that Urban Meyer would consider a place like Northwestern? <laughs> no, no. I, I, I was about to make my second bold prediction of the I, show, and that is that Urban Meyer would never ever consider Northwestern. It's close to Notre Dame. His, so you got that. But also, <laughs> it is the place where he would be able to sort of coach and live in the old school approach that he... Lo- uh, because no, I'm not saying the old school... like They just went old school and Pat Fitzgerald no. is on the side of the road. That's that's not old school. That's not that old school football. That's old school the movie with Will Ferrell, that's totally different. I mean a place where you don't have to get caught up in NIL, where you don't have to worry as much about guys transferring year in, year out, although their entire roster is going to be purged. Oh, boy, whoever takes over for that job is going to have a problem um, this year. But uh, they may as well not even play this year, honestly. They should just COVID themselves the whole year. (laughs) Nobody would miss them anyway. What are they going to do for media day? This send like the interim coach, or are they going to send nobody? I like how they're pretending like they're. It's not even. They won't even call him the interim coach. Like he's just in charge of administration until we figure out what the hell we're going to do. Like they, <laughs> what's the problem with calling him that? I don't know. Football supervisor. What players, yeah, like what players 
would go or be selected to have to represent them in an untenable situation for them uh, in two weeks. I would be very surprised if Northwestern appears at all in Indianapolis. And honestly, I'm fine with that because there's no, there's no good that can come of it. Yeah, I just don't know. Like maybe assuming assuming their athletic director uh, is in, on the job long enough to, for, to go to media day, uh, maybe that person can come and answer some questions. But I'm not so sure that the acting coach, who I think has only been there a few months, or any of the players will be in a great position. Um, I volunteer Bill Rabinowitz. <laughs> He's an alum. Yeah. I think one of the alarms, it's a very proud alumni base. Ask them. They'll tell you all about it. I've been taking it on the chin. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's you guys get in the hot seat and just talk it out in, in, in real life though. I mean, so you're, you're looking at this from a football perspective, obviously Northwestern being most people's 14th team in the big 10. Anyway, like it doesn't seem like it moves the dial much for the league, but how does it impact like other rosters? Because like I said, there are players on their team that, that will have a 30 day window to leave and go anywhere they want. Um, they have two offensive linemen on their roster that Ohio State offered out of high school Caleb Turnin, a freshman, uh, and uh, Joe Preby, a junior. Like the Buckeyes need help. I don't think that they will make any of those moves, but it is interesting now because these other teams around the league get this, like, basically, like to draft players from Northwestern's team. And yeah. we're in the middle of July. Like, that's crazy. Mel Tucker was charging his phone so hard last night. <laughs> like, it almost exploded. I could hear it all the way down here from East Lansing. He's going to take <laughs> 20 Wildcats. Now, they won't actually help his team, but I think they've got to be one of the only rosters that could actually do it, right? I mean, everyone was leaving out of the portal, uh, including in May, including his quarterback. Um, like, Ohio State can't. There's this is not a move that they can make in the next 30 days. Both those offensive linemen I, I listed are from the state of Michigan. Uh, both of them had Michigan State offers as well and chose to go to Northwestern. Uh, I assume because of their academic, you know, prowess and uh, because of Pat Fitzgerald, it would be quite a step back academically. <laughs> and to be like, well, you know what? Here it is. I'm go Sparty, uh, Sparty on. I, I, I do think that, uh, you know, Northwestern and Stanford are so alike. I mean, uh, Stan Stanford, former head coach, uh, Dave, uh, uh, you know, David, you Shaw. Know the guy. David Shaw. David Shaw. That's the guy I think would be a, a realistic possibility for, for Northwestern if he was interested in getting back into coaching. Do, do you not? The guy who, like, was burned out because Stanford couldn't get enough good football players that could beat in the Pac-12. Is it going to go to yeah, but now the Pac-12 doesn't exist. So, you just. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I would hire. Uh, I would hire Illinois native Jeff Munkin and run the triple option and just annoy the hell out of everybody in the Big Ten. Tim Beck is available, I think. No, he's the head coach at Coastal he's the head Carolina. Coach of Coastal Carolina. That's not – no. He wants to go to the Big Ten. He's it always is actually – uh, this show is turning into something I don't know what we're talking about. We've lost most of the listeners by now, I'm sure. But if you are a program like Northwestern, why do you not just run the option? Like, that is what you should be doing. You are out athletes. We watched what they did against Ohio State a year ago when they basically ran the option. Like, just do that because that's how you equalize on the field when you're lacking in talent, and they're going to be playing this season with 45 players. I like the idea of uh, Mel Tucker just texting every player on a Northwestern roster like a picture of a green sports car that's doors open up instead of out, like Lamborghini style. Like, huh? huh? What do you think of this? Oh, this is cool, right? Yeah. Want to come then, win three games and get your picture taken with this car? They respond, you remember that I chose Northwestern, right? I don't <laughs> think NIL is going to work here. I mean, yeah. just take, just peruse like I did. So they were at, we were asked this question on the message board at ohiostate.rivals.com. Is there anyone, anyone that could be of interest to Ohio State if they had room, which that's not going to happen. And just take a look at Northwestern's offensive linemen and, and think to yourself, do these people want – Suicide doors. Just <laughs> that's my challenge to you. Mm, no, I don't think they will. Yeah. I remember when, yeah. uh, when very, very different circumstances, but like it was open season on Penn State's roster after 2011, and like Illinois just like sent its staff to state college. <laughs> it was like, like taking lunches with players on campus, like at Panera, like interviewing offensive linemen, like, hey, you want to come to Champagne? 
No. I'm Urban good. Meyer just took the recruits. <laughs> yeah, he did. He took like four of them. It, it is going to be a fascinating couple of weeks to watch how this unfolds. Let's let's play let's play the odds here, boys. You know how I'm I love to gamble. Mm-hmm. Huge uh, gambling guy. If you were to put plus odds on anyone to be Northwestern's coach, right? Like this is the guy, or is it minus odds? Minus odds. If you were to let's say pick, pick a favorite. One, let's say minus one thousand, right? <laughs> I'm so good again. <laughs> so good at it. Minus minus a thousand. Uh, 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 a two to one. Uh, a, a one to five. Stop! Stop with the odds. <laughs> Who's the coach? Let's just nail it down. Oh, Who's gonna gosh. I don't know. I think a lot of the early list. Every person I saw in them, I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, Tommy Reese is going to be the coach at Northwestern? I don't think so. Uh, if Northwestern is serious about getting the best possible coach who understands Northwestern, and I don't th- know if he would take it, he probably won't, but Mike Kafka has to be a number one on the list. Now, do they need to go outside the Northwestern family and someone who doesn't have ties to Pat Fitzgerald? Maybe that's the conversation they have, but I mean – Kafka's done enough on his own. He's interviewed for NFL head coaching jobs. Uh, if they're going to pay a lot to fix this, if they're going to use the money that's coming from uh, Fox, CBS, and NBC, why not? I mean, maybe he'll feel some pull to go back to the alma mater and get it fixed. So if someone is the betting favorite, and I'm not suggesting in any way that he would take it, I think the best, most obvious candidate is Kafka. Uh, he is, but <clears throat> I think he'll probably be an NFL head coach. Um, I think they should hire Jeff Munkin. I think they will hire Chris Creighton from Eastern Michigan. I like Creighton. That's a good choice. Um, what, what, what about the guy from Wyoming? You know, take, hey, take that guy. You leave Craig Bull's name out of your mouth, He's son. Pretty good. I like Willie Fritz um, mm. uh, down at Tulane. I think that'd be a fun one. I also don't know what they're going to do with the rest of their staff. So I think that has a lot of part in this. Like, are they keeping everyone else and just with Gerald or is a new guy coming in and wiping out the whole staff? Do they have to go with an interim guy for this year because it's so late? Like, I, I don't, uh, my, my, bet would, be that, they have to, my right? bet would be that someone on the roster, that someone currently there um, that will run the show this season. And uh, then you, you go out and make a swing at the end of this season. So I think they're going to go into it with an interim coach. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's no way that somebody is taking over as a full-time head coach and leaving whatever job right. they have now in mid-July. That's not going to happen. No coach would do that. They're very scrupulous people. <laughs> yeah, Tucker. well said. Mel Tucker left Colorado pretty late. <laughs> is Dion available? <laughs> Maybe Mel Tucker doesn't want to get them to leave Northwestern. Maybe he just wants to go to Northwestern himself. Mel Tucker is president is texting portal. Mel Tucker. Sports cars with suicide doors. What do you think, Mel? We got a purple Lambo. Come on. <laughs> it's better than green. He just texts back, anyway. Tuck coming. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wherever, wherever the every, contract, every contract is just Tuck coming. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> it's it wonderful. Beautiful. Good for him. We've lost, we've uh, lost the plot here. We uh, sure have. I apologize to everyone who watched this. Like, I know you want to. Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State, Buckeyes, Buckeyes, Buckeyes. Um, we talked about. We started Ohio- with Brian Hartline. I know, but Ryan Hartline and are there Northwestern <laughs> players of interest to Ohio State? And rather than just saying no to both of those things, you know, we found some other ways to talk about them. I, I think this is an interesting thing for the Big Ten, but like it's not like Maryland or someone like that where it's a middle of the pack team that one coach could come in and change the, everything and like take advantage of everything that's being put into the facilities and the program. So I, I just think that ultimately, like, what would have to happen for a Northwestern to hire someone that actually moved the dial in a way that made them a, a legitimate contender in two or three years? Like, I, I just don't see it happening. You know who they could hire next year? Um, former Alabama analyst, Pat Fitzgerald. <laughs> that's okay. Well, that's the best hire. joke of the show. Bill saved it until the very end. And uh, we can't, we can't top that. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, hope you've got something out of this episode. If not, I promise we'll try 
uh, harder for the next episode on Thursday. But, you know, it's a midweek edition of the Podcast Daily with Bill Berm and myself, Austin Ward. We appreciate you for joining us. If you made it this far, thank you. We'll talk to you later.